Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sneha, and I'm a security specialist at Okta. I'm joined today by Jay and Vijay, my colleagues, who will be helping us present Office 365 and Windows 10. So why are we here? We noticed that Office 365 and Windows 10 are not only something that we've all been talking about with a lot of our customers, but it also has many different workflows that we're looking to understand not only how they work, but how can they be enhanced? What is Okta doing to help you adopt these workflows? You may be looking at a migration project. You may be looking to secure your environment. You may be looking at using conditional access. And today, we hope to be able to address those topics for you, let you know what's out there, as well as what is Okta doing to help you get there, and what you can set up today. We're going to start with Office 365, do a couple demos, and then move on to Windows 10, and have some time left for questions as well. So let's get started. Office 365 has been the top app in Okta for the past several years. There's a reason for this. People love using Office 365, and the integration with Okta is very seamless. Why do we say it's seamless, and why do we say Okta and Office 365 work really well together? First, vendor neutral. This means we want you to be able to adopt any technology you want, including all the Microsoft technology, with one vendor. You can use Okta to adopt all the different tools in your belt to be able to join those seamlessly. Second, central source of truth. There should be one place for you to go to be able to see who a user is. What do they have access to? Should they have access to this? What kind of license do they have in Office 365? And last but not the least, single pane of glass. We want your admin experience and not just your end user experience to be seamless. Your admin should be able to come to one place and be able to manage single sign-on, MFA, and maybe everything else too in one place. With that, we see that with Office 365, customers are in different phases of their journey. How many people here already use Office 365? That's a lot, right? So we see customers who are people maybe who just deployed Office 365 today, somebody who's already deployed Office 365 but is looking at using MFA or conditional access, or maybe you're still on on-prem exchange and you're looking to see how a migration would look. As we go through these flows, we typically see customers in three different phases, and we hope that the different pieces in this information are able to address you regardless of what part of the journey you're in. First, identity consolidation. Let's take an example of where your identities may lie. You may be using several multiple AD for us, or you may be using another IDP, doesn't matter. Regardless of where your identities are, the first step is how do I get these identities to a place from which I can access them to actually start using Office 365, as well as maybe my other cloud tools that I have in Azure. This reduces your on-prem footprint, but also we want to make this an easy experience, and you're able to do that with Okta. Second, seamless integrations. So now that your users are where they need to be, where do they go from there? What access do they need to be able to get their job done? This includes everything from all those tickets that you may be thinking about. How does a user onboard? How do I get what I need? Do I need to put in a request every time I need something? We want to make this a seamless experience. So using Okta's superior admin experience, you can make sure that the user can get started and going with their Office tools. And last, but maybe some of the most important pieces here, technology changes, but also threats change too. So as we think about that, we need to say, now that the users are in, how am I protecting not just the user, but the data that they're accessing? This includes things like MFA. Threats, what am I noticing? How can I prevent lockouts, password spray attacks, and using the tools that both Okta as well as Microsoft offer to make this the best of breed integration that you can hope for. With that, I'm going to invite Jay to the stage to tell us a little bit about how identity consolidation with Okta and Microsoft technologies work. Hi, I'm Jay Bruton. I'm a cloud architect at Okta, and I work with uh, a lot of our complex, I'll just say complex customers. Um, 
And I want to talk about identity consolidation and some of the things we're doing with some of our larger customers. And I, and I have a customer example I'll, I'll walk through. Um, to start, how did we get in this situation? And um, a typical M&A scenario, I'm just going to kind of walk through. You know, you have your network, your, your uh, applications, and everything's humming along just fine, and you make an acquisition or a merger happens. And how do you get these uh, integrations done? So you typically, you would put in a WAN, you would put in some firewalls, then you would create some domain trust, and potentially you would put in an identity management solution to synchronize uh, identity so you have a common address list, that sort of thing, a gal. Um, and this tends to happen over and over again in, in larger companies. Um, and you end up with, you know, four, five, six. And you, you know, that you can do a domain migration, and that's a heavy lift. You have to move workstations, users, all those things. Uh, but what I see over and over again is uh, IT groups just kind of kick the can down the road and let those companies continue to do what they do, and they piece together something to, to make it all kind of flow a little bit better. Um, so with Okta, you, you don't need to put in WANs, you don't need domain trust, you don't need firewalls. You can, uh, you can do all of this with uh, an Okta agent and just plug it in. You turn on the agents in, in the new company and all identities get synchronized to Okta. Users continue to log on with their AD credentials if that's how you choose to, to, uh, to let it flow. And um, you can start granting them access to your, all of your cloud apps and, and on-prem apps. So now I'd like to uh, walk through a customer, oh, sorry, uh, the, the Okta approach. Um, it's a cloud approach. You don't need firewalls. You don't need uh, to do any on-prem AD consolidation. You um, can reduce the reliance on Active Directory by granting you know, your access controls in Okta rather than, than um, Active Directory. And uh, you won't need an ID, uh, IDM solution on-prem. So a customer, customer example, this is a customer that I'm, I've been working with a lot the last uh, year or so. They're in 100 countries. They have over 90,000 users. And they have uh, over 200 Active Directory for spread across the world. Um, some of their challenges, they have no central source of identities. They, they could not uh, stand up a global application for, and get all of their users access to it. There was just no way technically to do that. Um, and they didn't know who their users were, or where their users were. There's still users out there that they're not sure where they're at. So it's an ongoing challenge. So with Okta, well, so they have, they have uh, the, from a problem statement perspective, they have disconnected identity stores. Like I said, they have over 200 active directories. The number's actually much larger than that and not even sure exactly what the number is. Um, none of these domains or forests were trusted, so they had no way to share resources on-prem. Um, in order to do that, they had all kinds of complicated firework, uh, firewall rules they had to put in, we're going to have to put in place to do this, and, um, and a lot of scripts to shift users around and, and sync things. So with Okta, we deployed a hub and spoke model for them. They have uh, several core business units, and so each of them got an Okta spoke. They connected up all of their active directories. Uh, fairly simple process with just dropping an agent in place, and then they could then provide application access to all of the users within their little spoke. Uh, then we connected all the spokes up to an Okta hub, and they are now able to provide global access to corporate applications, something they were not able to do in the past. Um, they have over 100 applications deployed now. They have delegated authentication turned on with 200 plus Active Directory is connected, and um, everything's working very well. So the next phase, um, this, that opened up uh, a lot of things for the next phase. So they, they now have a central source of truth for all of their identities. They can go to the Okta Hub and look, and they'll see all 90,000 plus users there. They can manage them there. 
They have increased agility every time they do another merger or acquisition. They just drop an agent in place and onboard that company. Um, significant cost savings, and that'll come out when I talk about the next phase with them. Uh, but uh, it, it, they haven't had to deploy all that on-prem infrastructure to get things working. Uh, and so future opportunities, um, they're now looking at deploying MFA across the board. They uh, are doing an Office 365 tenant consolidation, um, and then they have you know, an API. They can write their own utilities and, and take care of their users that way. So let's talk a little bit about the Office 365 consolidation. So right now, they have 125 tenants, and they have 2,400 domains right across those 125 tenants. Um, and they're connected through 200 ADs. I, I couldn't make a diagram complicated enough to, 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 to show that. So, um, so um, how are we helping them? So with Okta, because they have all of these users in a single hub, in a single Okta org, we're able to provision the Office 365 into the new central tenant. And um, if any of you have done Office 365 migrations, we'll, we'll create an account in that new tenant they have some third-party tools they're going to use to move the mail into that account, and then we'll, when the domain is done, moved, and has been completely moved, we'll re-register it in the new tenant, and flip a switch, and Okta will provision the user back in with the appropriate name, or just do a name swap form. So it's going to be a fully automated process, and I'm not sure how long it's going to take to move all that mail, but you know, it's pretty significant savings. When we looked at doing it um, the traditional way, it was do an AD migration was the first answer. Uh, that would have taken, I'm just gonna say years. Um, uh, or, you know, go out, the simpler way would be to go and connect Azure AD Connect 200 plus times and install it and synchronize to the new tenant and all of those types of things. It's still a lot of heavy lifting to do that. So, um, Okta will do the provisioning, Okta will do the single sign-on and, um, Potentially the licensing, we're not sure on that yet. We haven't got that far. And they still will have a single pane of glass to, uh, to look at all of these users that are connected to Office 365. With that, I'll bring BJ up. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. How's everyone doing so far? How's Octane been so far? Good? Awesome. Great. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, I'm super excited to talk to you about the second step in this journey, which is uh, seamless integrations with Office 365. Um, I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about why Octa's integrations with Office 365 is seamless, just touch upon some of the points Neha made, and then I wanted to share with you some of the major improvements that we've made to this integrations over the last year, announce some new features, and then do a couple of demos uh, after that. So, quick uh, preview on why Octa's integrations with Office 365 is great. Okta's integration is always a cloud-first approach. Like Jay mentioned, this helps customers in their cloud journey, right? We know a lot of customers have a cloud migration journey, and Okta is definitely going to be a trusted partner in your cloud journey. Empowering best-of-breed technologies. Now, let me take a minute to explain to you what this really means. Um, so so from, from, from my standpoint, when I say empowering best-of-breed technologies, I acknowledge that customers have a choice when they when they move to the cloud. They have a choice in choosing the apps that they want. But in theory, they're just choosing Okta as their neutral identity provider, and Okta is absolutely committed to have deep integrations with the Microsoft stack and also the non-Microsoft stack, so that when customers choose Okta as the IDP, they have a no-compromise approach, and they don't feel that they've missed out on anything on the Microsoft stack or the non-Microsoft stack. We are absolutely committed to have deep integrations across the board, and we are going to do our best to give, use, give our end users and admins the best integrations possible. Superior admin experiences. So I've been talking to a lot of customers recently around why they chose Okta and what has, some of, what has been the driver in like, using Okta more and what are some of the future projects with Okta. And one thing that has really resonated in all of my interviews that I've had is customers say that it's just easy to use. I've, it's easy to set up policies. It takes less time. It's a, it has a better UX and it feels fresh. This is great feedback for us, and we are absolutely committed to continue to improve on that journey. So with that being said, 
let's get on to the fun part, which is let's see what we've done and let's talk about some of the major improvements that we've done to the Okta Office 365 integration over the last 12 months. So show of hands here, how many of you have more than one Office 365 app in your Okta org today? Awesome. Nice. I see a lot of hands, so this is good. <laughs> so one of the primary reasons why admins would have more than one app in their Office 360, in their Okta org is you might have multiple domains in Office 365 that you want to federate with Okta, right? So essentially, if you want to federate all of these multiple domains, you would have to create individual app instances in Okta to federate all of these domains at once. You guys are not alone. This is one of our most voted ideas in our ideas page. This, idea, this was like, yeah, 330 different upwards, and this feature was asked a lot in like, you know, all my customer conversations so far. So today, I am proud to announce a new feature that we want to call multiple domain configurations with Office 365. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so let me just do a quick show of what this feature actually does. Um, as I said today, the feature today you could only configure one domain uh, in an Office 365 app. But with this new feature, we now have a fetch and select option. We're moving the domain selection tab from the general tab to the sign on tab, where you can now select this button. This button is going to retrieve all of the verified domains in Office 365. You can just select each of these domains that you want, hit save once, and it's going to go on the back end and federate all of the domains at once at the back. Um, so, just some quick notes about this feature. This feature is currently in beta. We recently launched the beta about a month back, and I've had extremely good signups on the beta. Oh, sorry, too, too fast. How do I go back on this? Yeah, okay. So I, I wanted to sh give out one specific detail about this feature. We acknowledge that customers need to add and remove new domains on the fly, and this needs to be as seamless as possible. So we've made our best to make sure that there is no end user impact when you add and remove new domains, and there's absolutely no downtime when you make changes to the domains that you have configured in Office 365. We are still looking for beta signups because we absolutely want to make sure we are covering all the use cases and addressing all of the challenges before we get to production. So I'd be absolutely happy to take more beta signups. That's the link to sign up for the beta program. And if you need more information, just reach out to me after the session. I'm happy to let you know how to sign up for the beta program. Yeah, so we are super excited about this. So I want to talk to you about one other improvement that we've made uh, in the seamless integration section. Um, today, with Okta, so we spoke about one set of the spectrum where now you could federate multiple domains from a single app. This is going to incredibly reduce the amount of time it takes for you to set up with Okta and Office 365, and it's going to be more seamless, right? Let's talk about the other end of the journey, which is the user deprovisioning flows. Today, with Okta, you could do user deprovisioning by blocking user sign-on attempts as soon as the app is signed off, or also you could revoke licenses for the user. We've taken that feature one step further, and today I'm proud to announce that you could now start deleting users from Office 365 uh, within, the Okta, within the Okta admin portal. Thank you. Yeah, so we are super excited about this feature, especially because of the power this feature would have with some of the workflow investments that we had uh, in the keynote today morning. Because think about a specific scenario. Like you, you, today, you, the way user onboarding works is you have users that are born in Workday, and then essentially your users are got, got in Okta, and then Okta provisions to Office 365. Now think about a deprovisioning flow right now. If the user is like deprovisioned in Workday, for example, then you could have workflows where you could just say, Okta could de now delete the user directly in Office 365. The way you would configure it is, like, like, like you see here, you, you just select the delete user option from, Office 36, from the Office 365 app, and this is going to automatically delete users from Office 365 going forward. This feature is in early access today. Like I said, uh, we are 100% committed to making Okta the single pane of glass for all your access management workflows, and we feel this feature is going to go a long way in satisfying that promise. You can enable this feature via EA Feature Manager today, something that Sneha is going to show in the demo as well. But yeah, if you have any questions about, the, about this feature, happy to answer as well. So, so that was the seamless integration section. Uh, now let's move on to the third part and possibly the most important part, which is secure experiences. We acknowledge that when you go to the cloud and you adopt a lot of these different apps, there's going to be a lot of you know, 
threat vectors that you potentially open up to. And you need to make sure that Okta's, in, Okta's integration with Office 365 is like completely secure and users access resources in the right best possible way. So Okta has recommendations because we are inherently a security company, right? And we recommend customers to adopt modern protocols. And the reason why we recommend customers to adopt modern protocols is because these protocols support multi-factor authentication, right? We know that customers who use multi-factor authentication are definitely less prone to hacks and risks than customers who do not. And we also recommend using Okta's adaptive sign-on policies on top of multi-factor authentication so that you could guardrail your user activities and your user behavior. These recommendations are great, but then, in theory, it's not really possible. Let's just take a simple use case, for example, like email. Your end users have hundreds of different ways of accessing email. They have all of these different apps from which they could access emails. Some support multi-factor authentication, some don't support multi-factor authentication. IT admins really face a challenge in implementing these best recommended policies because end users refuse to move out of these legacy protocols. They're like used to these apps. But then at Okta, what we thought was we, dis we wanted to talk among ourselves and we wanted to think about how we can get serious with these recommendations. How do we enforce these recommendations by default? So today, I'm proud to announce that we're making a change to our default sign-on policy within the Office 365 app. Now, let me tell you what this change is. So until before today, if you created a new Office 365 app from the Okta integration network, this was going to be your default sign-on policy. We would allow every app and every client, and admins would have to go and manually set deny rules on top of all of these allow rules to deny any specific client. We are flipping the table, and what we are saying is, we are going to deny access to every client by default. And we are only going to allow access to modern auth and web clients, essentially MFA-only clients by default. Now, don't be scared. This is not going to affect any of your existing apps today. You don't have to make a change to any of your existing apps. For any new app that you create from today, this is going to be the default sign-on rule for the Office 365 app. Thank you. So yeah, so this feature is generally available to all customers today, and we are super excited because we want to enforce these recommendations by default, and we want our customers to be safe and secure, and we are serious about it. Now let's talk about another topic that has generated a lot of interest recently, and I've had a lot of questions about this topic, so I want to address this topic properly here. Uh, so, so today, we, we spoke about having Okta adaptive sign-on policies, right? So we spoke about how you could have adaptive sign-on policies, and you could have contextual access policies around, say, user client-specific policies. You could have network checks. You could have trusted device checks. You could have all of these things within Okta. But then, on the Office 365 side, you also have conditional access policies for Office 365 specific clients, right? Like, you could set up policies for Office 365 specific apps, for example, like per app, for, for example. All of this is great, but the challenge is, once you set up that policy, when you take actions, for example, say you want to do a step-up auth in one of your Office 365 flows, right? There was no way for you to use Okta's multi-factor authentication product with Office 365's conditional access today. The reason was because Okta is not like, validated as an MFA provider with Microsoft. We thought about what could we do about that, because this is a huge, huge barrier for customers who use Okta's multi-factor authentication product, because if they want to leverage this conditional access policy, they would essentially have to have two multi-factor authentication apps, End users will have to have two apps on their phone. It's going to be a completely messed up end user experience, right? There's so many different problems with this. So we wanted to see how we, want, how we could solve this problem. So today, I'm proud to announce a new feature, which we call Okta's multi-factor authentication with Office 365's conditional access. Great. So with this feature, uh, essentially, Okta's MFA today can be used in conjunction with Office 365's conditional access policies when you enable step-up auth flows in your conditional access policies. This results in single MFA solutions for IT admins, single MFA solutions for end users, and it's a win-win across the board for our customers, and we are super thrilled about this feature. Now, I breezed through a lot of these features pretty quickly, and I wanted to get to this stage 
simply because this was a touchy topic and we wanted to do a demo to actually show you how this feature worked real time. So I wanted to invite Sneha back on stage to do a demo for this feature. That was a great, I love the applause for everything conditional access, right? But we want to prove to you, this is real, so I'm going to show you how to do this today. Um, if we could switch monitors, there we go. So what, what I have here, the workflow that we're going to go through right now is using Azure MFA as is today with the conditional access flow. And then we're going to go to the Okta admin console. We're going to walk through the steps to set this up. Like he said, we're going to see that you can enable this today and you can do it by yourself without even contacting Okta support. And then we're going to do the same workflow, but this time it will be Okta MFA. Okay? Great. So let's get started. If you see here, this is nothing but my typical Microsoft login flow. And what I'm going to do here is type in my username. And as long as you have the domain federated, it will take me to my Okta tenant. Once I'm at the Okta tenant, I will be able to log in with my username or password or any other adaptive flows that you have configured with Okta. Now what you'll notice here is if you're using Azure MFA today, this is the text that you'll get. Now, once I have a second, I'm gonna wait for that text to show up, which is the MFA pr provided by Azure. There we go. So I'm going to use this as my MFA verification, and this is done through Microsoft only. And this will provide access for me to be logged in. Now, we've seen this flow. Now, I hope we can provide a change to this experience so your users aren't thinking, where's this MFA coming from? Where's this other MFA coming from? So let's, let's log out of this flow and go to the very familiar Okta admin dashboard, right? So some of you may be using Okta MFA already, or maybe not. We have many different options for MFA here. In this example, I'll use Okta Verify, but you could use anything you like. So what we'll do first is we will enable Okta MFA just as a policy. All I have configured here is to say, when do I think MFA should be applied? So this is up to you. You could do it the app layer, Okta layer, absolutely up to you. Great. So I mentioned I would tell you how you can update this feature. So let's go ahead and see that. So if you go under settings, and if you don't have this feature show up today, by the way, please contact support and they'll enable that for you. And this is called our EA feature manager. What this means is you are able to see all the different flags that you can enable as a customer on your own that are flagged as early access in Okta. In this specific example, we're going to use 0365 pass claim for MFA. Go ahead and save. So what we're saying is Okta, please send over MFA information too now and not just IDP for these conditional access flows. With that, what we'll do is we'll also double check everything on the Office 365 page that you are familiar with. So you'll notice that I have logged in, used my typical Okta integration with Office 365, and I have this federated. And as long as I'm able to go through this flow, what I've done is now enabled the ability to do that. So we'll give it 30 seconds typically, and everything should be enabled and good to go after that. And what we'll do is we'll open a new session here, go to Microsoft again, but this time we're going to expect to see an Okta MFA flow. So same user, sorry, I'm a major Harry Potter nerd, so you're going to see a lot of Harry Potter characters today. So this is a flow that you are used to, so you'll see the login again, but of course, if you're using some of our advanced adaptive flows, you can also make this a factor only experience. And once I'm logged in, as long as that went through properly, you'll notice that I just got an Okta Verify. Hopefully my watch is working today, and I will be able to approve that. And I'm logged in, right? Was that easy? Great. <laughs> All right. With that, that ends our demo for that section, and we hope you were able to see how we're passing a claim for MFA and be able to integrate that with several different conditional access flows. We understand that this is one component of it, and there's many other flows that are sometimes harder to demo on stage, but we can assist you with getting that started for your environment. With that, I'll bring Vijay back to help us conclude the 0365 section. 
Thank you so much, Neha, for the demo. What do you guys think about the demo? Yeah. We are super excited about this feature, and we've had a lot of questions, so I'm happy to answer questions after this session on how you could use this feature and essentially take your conditional access flows and your opt adaptive sign-on flows and essentially set up policies that work for customers and be successful. We want our customers to be successful, and we want to essentially leverage you know, whatever you want to use. So with that, I wanted to do a quick recap on all of the different features that we spoke so far, because we, dem we wanted to talk about a lot of features. Multiple domains can be configured with a single Office 365 app. You don't have to configure 100 different app instances for 100 different domains. Okta supports deleting users from Office 365. Okta definitely recommends using modern auth by default and implementing multi-factor authentication. And when you implement multi-factor authentication, we definitely say that Okta's multi-factor authentication now works with Office 365's conditional access policies. And I wanted to end this Office 365 section with a two key messages. Essentially, Okta is a trusted partner to help you adopt Office 365. And this goes forward to any of the Microsoft stack, for example. We want to have deep integrations to the best of our capabilities, and we don't want customers to feel left out that they don't get to leverage any cool Microsoft technologies because they chose Okta as the IDP. And also, Okta definitely helps you make the most of your tech stack because you could use policies from Office 365 and Okta, and we will strive to make sure these work seamlessly. So with that, I want to move on to the next section of this presentation, which is Okta and Windows 10. And I'll give it back to Sneha to talk us through that. Thanks, Vijay. So how many people here are thinking all about the Windows 7 sunset next year and adopting Windows 10? Anybody testing Windows 10? Great. So what we want to do with the Windows 10 topic today is kind of address the fact that the world is changing a little bit with Windows 10. We talk about the word modern management. We want to talk about what workflows those mean, as well as give you some tips on what things that you could work with Okta for for some of these workflows. So when we use the word modern management, that's a pretty broad term. That includes a lot of different workflows. But as Windows 10 evolves and as these different workflows change, we want to support that. So what are these typical workflows? First. I always have customers who ask me, so now that we're doing Azure AD, now that we're thinking about Office 365 and Windows 10, what do these devices do? Should they be doing Azure AD join, on-prem join, hybrid join? What are these different workflows? And what you'll notice is we can support you regardless of the choices you make, but also based on your use cases, there may be different recommendations of what kind of device join works best for you. Next is the space of MDM. Right? We talk about Intune, we talk about VM, where you may be using any of your choice of tools. And these workflows build very differently on Windows 10. You want to think about how these devices enroll. Is it out of the box enrollment? Is it more high touch with the users? Does it need the domain? And being able to talk through that workflow. Windows Hello for Business. Has anybody here tested Windows Hello already? Great. So Windows Hello is a feature we love here at Okta. And um, Windows Hello is going to be some of the latest security features that they've released and is supported on some of the later Windows 10 devices. And what you're able to do is not just use it to log into these computers. There's several other workflows behind it that we hope to talk through today. Windows Autopilot. Whenever we, I talk to customers about MDM or getting their devices onto this new technology, it's always, what does my user have to do? Autopilot is a flow that helps you out of the box be able to get your device from where it is today to where it needs to be with it being very low touch on the end user. But it has some dependency some, on some other workflows that you need to work through to be able to enable that. And last but not the least, Vijay just introduced us to conditional access. This, of course, comes with some enhanced functionality on Windows 10, but we want to see how we can enhance that best of breed integration. Conditional ac access has some workflows that you may want to layer with your already existing adaptive policies in Okta. So with that, all of us have been thinking about this, but there have been key things that customers have been talking to me about, which is first, if I move to Windows 10, is there something I need to worry about? Can I still use Okta as my IDP? If I do hybrid AAD join, is there a workflow that's not supported if Okta is my IDP? As well as, can I actually use Windows Hello with Okta, or is that something I need to re re evaluate or test? 
So we want to address these today straight. So first, hybrid AAD join. We are able to help you achieve hybrid AAD join. If you are using Windows 10, 1803 and above, you will not see an IDP flow in that login. So you can successfully manage your hybrid AAD join with Okta as your IDP. If you are wanting to use Windows Hello for Business, there are several workflows there. We're able to secure that with the feature that we just talked about, which is passing claims for MFA. While you configure that first time Windows Hello for Business, Okta can secure that workflow for you as of today. And last but not the least, we want you to use technologies from both Okta and Microsoft. And the example that Vijay gave us was, you may have network policies in one place, you may have limited access and conditional access, but they should be able to work together. So I talked about device join and the different workflows that enables. Let's talk about that. First, what is AAD join? When we start moving away from these on-prem environments, we no longer live in the typical, this is how I'm going to issue the machine. It's on-prem domain join. Azure AD join is the workflow that will allow your device to be joined to the cloud domain so you can enable these new and improved cloud workflows. While you're doing this, there's different combinations of settings that you can use, but you can do that with the support of Okta and Microsoft. Second, hybrid AD join. I just quickly touched on that. Hybrid AAD join is when you have your on-prem domain, you have your cloud domain, your devices need to be part of both the worlds. This environment is supported because we understand that you can't just make these changes overnight. You can't move from on-prem to cloud on these devices overnight. And Okta is somebody that you can use as an IDP as you work through these workflows. Now, last but not the least, I know a lot of customers ask that I need to treat my email applications or sometimes the applications that have data behind it a little extra security, right? We need to make sure that people aren't saving these on their phones or they're thinking about these differently. And when we think about settings like DLP, one thing I always mention to customers is it's not just MDM. We think about conditional access, adaptive features, but also, for example, there's tools like Intune MAM that will help you secure workflows that are focused on DLP. And you want to think about these, especially in terms of, is this device BYOD? Is it corporate? What can I do on these devices to enhance their security posture? And you can do all of this with the support of the tools that you have. So Windows Hello for Business is a really cool feature. It uses the latest security with biometrics to log into your machines. And there's a few other things that we can help you do with that as well. So if you've had a ch not had a chance yet, please stop by our security booth where we're demoing being able to log in to Okta with any factor of your choice. So you can see how you can use several factors in Okta to log in, and that includes Windows Hello. Windows Hello is a supported factor in Okta. That means when you'd like to do MFA into anything behind Okta, Windows Hello can be one of those options. It also lets you log into your machines seamlessly, as well as the applications behind your Microsoft tools, really making this a seamless experience for not just the end users, but also admin management. With that, we mentioned we secured Windows Hello flows, and we mentioned pass claim. How does this actually work is what we want to demo now. So I have an environment here that is actually hybrid AAD join. So are a lot of you thinking about hybrid AAD environments? Yeah, great. So this environment that we built for the demo is a hybrid AAD environment where we've enabled Windows Hello for Business. And what we're going to do is, as a new end user, I am prompted to log in as well as enable Windows Hello. And that should be a pretty secure flow because this is something that I'm going to be using for not just one workflow, but many different workflows. So let's see how that would work. If we could switch to the demo. Great. So this is a Windows 10 machine that I'm going to log into with a user that hasn't been on this machine before. Once I type in the username and password, this is a typical login. It's going to set me up on this Windows 10 machine. And of course, hello, uh, Windows 10 is going to set me up. It's going to take a couple minutes. 
Quick thing here, when you're doing MFA policies with Okta, you are able to define what MFA factors you want to use. We didn't have a chance to use all the different ones today, but you could be using U2F, FIDO, the latest and greatest, as well as many different platform authenticators. Once we're logged into the machine, we are going to be prompted to set up a PIN. Let's go ahead and click on that as an end user. And I'm going to see a screen that I am very familiar with. So I'm going to log in with my credentials. And I will be respecting all the adaptive policies set forth, including Okta Verify or any other factor you may want to do. And once that factor comes in, I approve. And now I will be prompted to set up the PIN. Within Windows Hello, you have the ability to configure what kind of PIN that needs to be. In my case, I've made it four digits. You could include characters, whatever you needed. But what you've seen now is that I have used security features in both Okta and Windows to enable workflows in your environment. Great. Can we move back to the slides? So hopefully, that was a quick example of how we can use different workflows with some of our latest and greatest features to support best of breed security across the board. Now, if we come back to the different topics that we've been talking about, there's a lot of buzzwords we've used, right? So first thing, I've been working with some customers, and these are some things that have worked for them. So first, implement Windows Hello in the way that you like. It could be for login. You can use it as a factor. And secure that enrollment flow with Okta MFA. With adaptive policies and conditional access, we're thinking about things like network. We're thinking about risk scoring, like you saw this morning. We're thinking about threats, as well as devices and everything else you need to make sure that it's not just the right user, but that their login is secure to everything behind Okta. You can apply Office 365 specific policies in Office 365, but not compromise on anything you need for those secure workflows, even with Okta as your IDP. And if you're thinking about DLP and MDM, evaluate your different options, including Intune MAM, Intune MDM, VMware, any of your different tools, and see how these things can work together to give you extra device context with Okta. And with that, I'd like to Vijay, invite Vijay back up on stage to tell us where we go from here. We hope there was a very quick introduction into the different workflows you're seeing with Office 365 and Windows 10. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sneha. I just want to credit Sneha for this because that specific machine is running three different VMs with two different domain controllers and a Windows laptop. And she set this all up in like two hours. So this was an awesome demo. So thank you so much, Sneha. And like, yeah. And I just wanted to call out the power of that feature because customers want a touchless experience when they set up new Windows 10 machines. They are super excited about Windows Autopilot, out of the box experience for end users. And when they go through this Windows Autopilot flow, Windows Hello for Business is, we expect this to be part of that flow as well. And we are super excited to secure that enrollment flow with Okta too. So with that, I just wanted to give a quick recap uh, and some next steps on what we want. I definitely recommend signing up for the multiple domain feature. I was checking my email when I went back. I already have two signups. That's great. Keep them coming. We definitely want to hear more feedback on this feature and how do we make this feature better. Definitely go through and read the white paper on best practices around implementing modern auth. Uh, leverage the most of your tech stack, like I said. We are super excited and we are committed in helping customers do this. So leverage the most of your tech stack by using Office 365 and Windows Hello for Business with Okta as the IDP. And then, last but not the least, uh, so I'm part of the product team. Uh, I don't know if I introduced myself earlier. but uh, So essentially, definitely look out for more product announcements in the future. We have a lot of exciting stuff in the pipeline. And we're super excited on the problems that we're going to solve for all of our customers around identity and access moving forward. So with that, I think we have a minute for questions. Yeah, but yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions?